Earlier this year, thousands of teachers from Arizona to Virginia formed statewide walkouts and protests in Washington, demanding better pay and more funding for schools, thus launching the Red for Ed movement. In Florida, teachers wore red in solidarity despite not being allowed to strike. I decided to return to the high school I attended in Miami, Florida, and spoke to the teacher who impacted me the most to see how the current issues our nation is facing are affecting her and her students. <laughs> My name is Lisette Monson. I teach 12th grade ACE general paper for the Cambridge Magnet and 10th grade. This year it's regular, usually it's honors. I fell into teaching because my friends were doing education, so I thought I would do that to help me pay for school. But by that time, I had already invested a lot, so I stayed in, in education. It was supposed to be a temporary thing. And 26 years later, I'm still here. You know, people talk so many bad things about teachers, and I say, you know what? Um, it's a shame that that's how you feel, but if you think you can do a better job, get in there and do it, and do it for that salary. And realize that your school day, your day does not end when the bell rings because my day definitely does not end when the, when the bell rings. When you love what you do, you're willing to sacrifice for it, but you also have to be met halfway. How can I look at my students, you know, who wanna be teachers, who wanna, they wanna pay it forward, they wanna continue the good works and impact the world that they live in as teachers, and how can I tell them in good faith, you know, it's a noble cause, but make sure you marry someone, you know, that makes more money than you because you're never gonna break even. And it's really honestly not fair. An educator such as myself, I've impacted how many kids a year for 26 years. So I just, I find the disparity offensive and hypocritical because we talk about who teaches the doctors, who teaches the lawyers, who teaches all these people, who teaches the politicians, teachers. Um, we were told that we were gonna have smaller classrooms and you know, and we can pay a fine and have more kids in a classroom. So a lot of schools are willing to pay a fine rather than put an extra body and make the classes smaller. So you have a lot of issues such as that. The fact that in our culture, we can pay millions of dollars for someone to throw a ball across a field or to hit a ball with a stick. And yet we can't afford teachers who are the front of the line of the war on poverty. I mean, it's through education that a culture becomes better, progresses, and yet our teachers, they are the worst paid, pretty much. And when you don't pay enough, the, a lot of the educators don't care. Like, when I started teaching, um, the salary for me was okay, it wasn't great, but a lot of teachers were willing to, oh yeah, I'll coach, even if it's only three or 400 extra dollars a year on my salary and it takes more time than what it's worth, they didn't mind because they enjoyed teaching and they felt respected and part of the system, part of the value. But it's no longer, we're disposable. We're not even addressing the changes that are coming. We're not addressing individual needs. We're not addressing the creativity that we need for our society to progress and grow. Um, the way things are being done obviously doesn't work. Our country is mid to last in terms of educational systems. Um, and it's just really pathetic. It's really pathetic that we're investing money in teaching kids how to take a test or how to answer in a box when that's not what the real world is like at all, nor will it be when they get there. So, I mean, it's just, that's what's happening with our underfunding is that we're spending money on the wrong things. Everything that I spend, I spend on my students. I bring them food, I bring them water out of my own pocket. And my students will tell you, I've had times when I've had lunch and a student doesn't have lunch and there's no food, and I've given them my lunch, and I don't have a problem with that. But what irks me is that there are kids that come to school and they don't make it in time for their breakfast, or they're still hungry, they have a long day, and a granola bar is gonna help them through the day, but that again has to come out of my pocket. And it's not fair. I love to hear people say, well, they should have, they, you know, how can they not have food or they can have free breakfast or, and it's not the same. I've seen sometimes what the food is and I'm sorry to say, but it's not, I wouldn't let my children eat it sometimes. Like sometimes the food is just not good. They're children and they're my children. And if I'm willing to lay down my life for them, I take that seriously and I take care of them as well. You know, I nourish them as much as I can. So it affects me personally and it affects me financially at home because yeah, I do my groceries for my house and my groceries include, for my house, they include my school kids. I have to, I include that in. I always get asked, well, why don't you fight 
fight harder. The state of Florida is a right to work state. Because of a huge strike that Florida had, they actually wrote into the Florida constitution and it was not negotiated by any teacher union that we couldn't strike. So therefore, if we strike or if there's anything that's, I guess, similar to a strike, like a walkout or a sick out, we can and will get fired. So ironically speaking, that same contract that tells us what we can and can't do was considered null and void when it came time to pay up our salaries. They renegotiated our contract. They basically told us, yeah, we know that we agreed to that, but we can't afford it. I love what I do and I believe in it. I believe in the future and I want, I want to see it be better. I'm not complaining to complain. I'm pointing out what needs to be fixed. But at the end of the day, and that's a cliche to say, but really, honestly, at the end of the day, I go to bed and I know that I've done the best that I can and the most that I can for my kids. This is my passion. I never signed up for teaching thinking I was gonna be a millionaire. And I didn't go into it because of the holidays or the vacations or anything like that. Because if that were the case, I wouldn't have even continued to get my master's in educational leadership so that I can eventually be an administrator and change a school's environment you know, and change the tone of at least one school where I would be responsible for how things are done. So I believe in education, I do. And I don't want to come off negative because I'm not trying to be negative, but I am trying to say enough is enough. But I love what I do and I believe in it. And I believe that the true power lies in me being the best teacher that I can be so that the kids that leave me, they can make the changes that need to be made. And that's the way it works. Teachers in the state of Florida are paid below the national average. And the ones suffering all of this are the students themselves. Underfunding and lower teacher pay leads to lower morale, less quality teachers, and less chance for student success. Caring for our teachers and the education system is the key to the future of this nation. As Ms. Monson would always say, remember to make good choices. Until next time.